start editing data, we um, have a series of steps to go through. I will um, demonstrate these steps in a general way so we can see both how they are used for editing data in ArcMap, but also how we can use the same data together with Arc Collector. So the first thing we need is to add the data to your project. Um, if um, you have done the video on creating data structures, they will already be there. But I just uh, reset, so I'll just drag my two layers in. So now I've got my two layers in ArcMap. One of the advantages of using domains is that we can also optimize our data entry because we can say that, okay, this is a allowed number of values and instead of having to type them in, we can let ArcMap give us a graphical choice. The way we do this is that we first give our object symbology. So I start and go in my posters and choose categories and my student organization is the add all values. So that's going to be my main choice. I have these two student organizations and I know that I'm going to be using this in our uh, collector in a moment and on small screens these will be very difficult to see so I'll just change them I will make them uh, give it a brighter color and I will edit the symbol and uh, increase the size to about 8 get rid of the outline um, maybe I should use a bit darker color and I will add a cross to indicate where the center is so now I've got my final symbol is this yellow with a black cross on top so that's the, the one of the symbols and I'll do somewhat the same for student award I'll beef it up to 8 I will edit the symbol meaning I'll remove that Outline, I will change the color to a lighter green and I will add a cross to indicate the center. So now I've got two symbols that are relatively easy to see on a um, tablet or mobile phone monitor. And I'll say OK. Then I'll go down in my buildings and I would like to be able to see through buildings so I'll change that symbology again to be a um, might as well just take one of the defaults here hash and I probably would say that I don't want that color I want something like that so let's leave that as my choice of symbology <clears throat> so I've given my element symbology and what I now can do is that we'll start doing editing there is a editor toolbar which we might as well start up so it's under I right clicked in the gray area to bring up the list of all my toolbars I can go up and say customize toolbars uh, and then find the list but it, it's typically easy just to click in the right click in the gray area and then we've got our different layers and I can go in and say start editing but before doing that there's a thing I would like to do and that is if I go down on, on my layer and go to that editor it has this one down here that's called organize feature templates see the idea of this one is that I instead of having to choose a student organization I will ha have a template for those two choices so I'll say organize and I'll say my posters I go for both of them by the way oh, okay new template for this one sorry and I'll do it for both of them and finished so what I've got now here is I got a template so if I choose the yellow one I get a free form and if I choose the green one I get a student role and I also have this template for my uh, buildings 
So now I'm, um, I've got my data ready. Um, I've got my template. That's the template is very important when you're going to use the art collector. Another thing that is important using art collector is defining okay what area are we working in. So in order to do that, I'll start out by loading an image of the university. Um, I've got one called Roskilde. Yeah, I'll add this one. I'll zoom to its layer, and I will zoom in on the university campus uh, I've got that there so this is the area that we'll be doing our um, monitoring of posters in and um, because we'll be using small um, handheld units they would like they don't need to download a lot of AI and things like that. So a good thing will be to tell um, the software that this is our maximum extent. And we can do that by right-clicking on our data frame, uh, right-clicking in here, or right-clicking up versus layers, it's the same. Going to Properties, and then under Data Frame, going down to this one that says Extent Used by Full Extent Command. That's that's a full extent command, the globe there. And what it's going to do is that by default it zooms out to everything. But if I have a background of the whole of the world, that was close zoom out to the globe level. So I don't want to do that. I choose other and specify extent and then use current visual extent. So now that's set like that. That means that if I now go in and zoom in, oops sorry, that zoomed out. Um <laughs> I also work with some art. If I now press this one, it will bring me into that same area. And if I did the zoom in as I wanted to do, I can press the full extent and it will come out. So I can I can go beyond full extent by using the zoom out. But in in time, I say reset, go to full extent. That will give me this area, and um, that is. Um, when working with the data collector is a thing that will be, um, it will give you a warning if you don't set this extent. So we have now set up our data, and um, if I wanted, I could edit my data in here. I can say start editing, and you can see I've got my over here. I've got a create feature, so I can click on this one, and I can place a feed form poster out here in um, the area, and. I can ask for its attributes, like that, and I can then choose that that was illegal to place it up there. I can create a new feature, so I choose the Dendor World and place them out around the field, um, and go to the attributes and say that's also illegal. So both organizations have now created an illegal poster. Once I've done this, ah, I, might, I might as well also make a building now I'm here. So I'll go back to my create features because we all know that, ah, no, I didn't want, but people that come at university know that this building has now been demolished. So I'll just draw on this building. Because otherwise we would be super Surprise that there are no posters around here. So I'm finished, and I can then you know, I click that, and I can right click, and I can say finish sketch and finish part. I'll cover the difference between these um, in another video, but for now I'll just say finished sketch. So I now got this area here, and I will in its attributes say that remember I had a made a domain for demolished. So now that building has been registered as being demolished. So I have created some simple data. I can of course delete data if I don't like it. I can choose the black arrow here. I can click on my my object and I can delete it. And uh, I can choose that one and delete that too. 
So now I've only got my demolished building as the only layer, or the only data in my layer. So I can edit my data in ArcMap and I can test that all of these different elements work. You can also see my domain. If I uh, choose the demolished one here and look at its attributes up there, I can have its number and uh, if I make them a bit bigger like that, it will say that this is a number between 0 and bit 9. Um, a number between 0 and 1000. So if I type in 2, everything is good. If I type in 3000, everything is still good. Which is a bit of a strange thing, but never mind. Um, this range apparently only works in our um, data collector tool. Here, we are allowed to type in whatever value we want, and uh, no problem in that. So, I'll just uh, stop my edit and try to save. Yes. So I have now got a building with uh, 3,000 elements in it um, and of course that's out, is outside my domain but domain control of ranges in ArcMap has never really worked. So I have uh, fooled around, I have checked that my things work or not work, the uh, domain problem there and I'll just get rid of my L photograph because I only needed that to find my location. So now I've got this black map and the important thing is that I am in drawing order. This one you sh should not be in in list of by source but be in drawing order. And now I'm ready to publish my data to um, my service from which I can connect my mobile devices. So I go up and the first thing I have to do is that I have to connect to what is called Arc GIS Online, which is where it, which is um, Esri's um, server from which we can use data for our mobile devices. So I'll have to sign in, and I'll sign in with uh, a username that has the right to publish data. I've created some course users and. Uh, This user here has the publishing right. So, login. I'm now logged in, you can hopefully see as logged in as OBGIS one book. And this user has the right to publish data. So I can go up under share data as service. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this data and send it to Arc GIS Online. So publish as service and choose my hosted services, Roskilde University. So that's our hosted element at GIS ArcGIS.online. I will uh, give the name Org Posters that and yeah that's right not allowed to do that so I've created the service and it's now asking me for a series of um, parameters um, don't need to do anything here but under capabilities I wanted to change to feature access because we're going to edit the individual posters so change that to feed access. I don't need the background map, so I'll turn the tiling off. And then I need feature access and set that you're allowed to create posters, delete posters, query posters, sync posters. That means that you're able to take the device offline. So even, you, even though you haven't got a internet connection for a while, if you are somewhere in the wild doing data collections, 
be if you enable sync that means that as soon as you get back and get a data connection you are able to synchronize your device with the server so that's sync and update that means that you'll be able to go in and change existing ones so I said all of these I give it a description so uh, book posters I give it a tag and demo of Demo of book posters. Uh, I won't put anything in about who's access and so on of it. And then I go to the final one, which is my sharing, and say who is going to be able to see and work with this data. If I tick this one, everyone that I is using a book account will be able to access the data. I am not a, a book account at book, but a book account at Isri. If I choose this one, every one, also people outside the organization can access it. If I now create, I've now created a course user group, so everyone on the JS course at ESV can now go in and use it. So everyone that's on the course used, um, all the course users are able to go in and access the data set. So I'm set these things and I can now go and set analysis. And it will go in and check if everything's right. And if anything went wrong, I've got some errors, some warnings. I got some messages um, that are severity low. And that is basically that, that I haven't set a change in my scale as I zoom in or out. I haven't set it to change the symbology. So I can live with that uh, message. That's not a problem for me. So I can now say publish, I click the publish button, and the data is now saved to Esri's server. It's now being processed at Esri's server, and it has now been published successfully. So I'm happy, and matter of fact, I can go down under my catalog and if I go under catalog now, under my hosted services, you can see I have already got this service down here that I'm running. So I can see that it is connected. What I want to do is that I want to go to my web browser and I want to go into this website which is called www.arcgis.com. You don't have to write that features, it will append that automatically. Like that. And here I'll sign in. Um, if you are from an organization that do not have um, a organizational login, you can get a 60 days trial uh, login. You can, SV is very good at giving support for non-profit organizations and things like that. So there's a lot of possibilities to do this even though you have not got a license yet. So I'll just say sign in and I'll sign in not with this username but with OB like that and I'll sign in don't remember that, thank you so now I've signed in as my OBGIS user my course user and I can go in and I can look at my contents and we can see that we have a service definition, that is the interaction to the mobile devices, and we have a feature class, um, that is the data if you wish. So we've got these things ready for us to run, and the next thing we now have to do is that we have to go up and create ourselves a map. So we click map, and we will add our layer, so I say search for layers, and search inside my organization, and I have this one is 
my test for doing it and this one is the one we can use so I say add it zooms into this area that is defined by it and I'm finished so this was this maximum area I created and you can see that I have this demolished building here registered already but no posters um, I can have my two layers posters and I have a background as a topographical map that's not a very useful background map for this purpose so I'll change it to an image layer this so now I've got my data on top of an image layer and I can start working with it I can again test if my environment works by saying edit and I can click on a poster I can click somewhere and I can say this is fleet form and I can say that's again illegal so that's working fine so now I'm editing the data in the web interface I can create a building Oops. Like this I can double click to finish it I can give it a number of posters and you can see here I can choose zero and I can go upwards and if I type uh, 2000 it says oops out of range so here the domain is working so I just say 999 and this building is demolished so that was fine close um, I don't need this data so I'll just uh, get rid of it um, so I got that one and I can go in and say edit and I can delete it I got this one and I can delete that too so now I'm back to my almost clean data sheet I have still got this demolished building there and I'll leave that so my map is fine I just save it as a map call it book poster give it a tag book poster um, don't give it some way yeah. course description whatever and this is saved at OBGIS once that's fine and it's now ready to go if we want to let other people use this data set we'll have to go into my content again so now on the home my content and what we can see now is that I have this one which is a web map and it's registered as not shared okay now I also want to edit this status of it so I want to uh, oops that's not right I want to click on it and I want to say share and I want to share with everyone that is on this course so now all the OBGIS users that are registered have access to working with this data set because my post of my web map is shared and my feature layer is shared and those are the things I need to have shared in order for our people to work with the data set so I'm done in ArcMap I set up my layers I create right clicked on them I meant to say edit um, I've said organize templates and ensure that I have some nice templates I could click on I set the zoom extent so I right clicked on my data frame and said data frame extent used by full extent and specified it as my current view so that's set and finally once I had logged in I went and shared my new data as a service on ArcGIS in ArcGIS Online I logged in I created a map I went to my content I created a map I added my layers by searching for them on my server 
I tested if they worked, I saved them, and finally I ensured that under my content that my both my map was shared to everyone that needed to use it and my feature layer was shared to everyone that needed to use it. So all of those things are set. I'm now ready to try and see if it works on my mobile device.